What is going on, fellow Sasha? So, MJ Sasha is Mosh Marcus today. We're back with another video, and um, yeah, guys, we're back. We for now. We are, we, are, we are on our third video of the day. We are back on the grind. Um, this is from the homie Gigook. Gigook. I can never pronounce this man's name right, but Gigook. Gigook. <laughs> it's not even on purpose, but um, yeah, man, we're back. We're back on the video. 2010s, the decade anime uh, grew up. That is facts, bro. We came a long way. I remember the days where I used to watch anime when I was younger, and we used to get teased for it, bro. I mean, I, I was part, I was part of that crowd who who got teased on, bro, for watching anime. For expressing you know, my likeness. Hey, Lump King. I watched that video later, but um, uh, you know, expressing my love for anime. I remember, like, I used to kind of hide back in the day for like, uh, you know, I don't like anime, blah blah blah, but. Listen, now, as you can see, I, I could care less. I got a whole Naruto tattoo on me. I got a My Hero hoodie, a freaking Todoroki hoodie on me. I play anime games. Got the Dragon Ball controller right here. Got the, I, got, I play anime games. I got the wall of anime drawings on my wall. Um, yeah, I don't even care no more. So, like, listen, I, listen, I, I love anime. You know what I'm saying? I grew up with this stuff. So... We came a long way. Now watching anime is like the norm. Now it's the cool thing to do. You know where they got this from? From anime. That's where they got that from. So anime is definitely becoming more mainstream. It's definitely becoming more like the norm to watch. Where everybody should be watching and stuff like that. It's it's the normal thing to do. I, I guess I remember them days where we used to get picked on for watching that stuff. But now people are all loving about it. You know, I was... I, which makes me happy because I'm happy that I get to see all my, you know, see people who, um, people come out of their shelves like, yo, bro, I love anime, man. Like, because, you know, I have the confidence to say because everybody be watching it. So, we really grew up, bro. The decade anime dev did grew up. So, I'm definitely can't wait to see what my man's good good has to say about this. But I know this is a sponsor he's doing right here because... Uh, now open I don't really want to watch this, bro. I'm going to keep it a beam. I really don't want to watch Years it. of anime. Yes, sir. The start of 2020 marks the start of a new decade, and with that also comes the end of a decade of anime. Ten years is a pretty damn long time, especially if you take a look back at just how much has changed within that time period. So instead of doing a top X anime of the 2010s, which pretty much everyone else has already done at this point, it would be far too much work for a video already two months into the new year. I thought I could take this opportunity to reflect on what's happened to anime as a whole in the past ten years, from the perspective of someone who's been an avid fan of the medium for the entirety of that time. I've watched as anime has slowly grown and changed over the years. We've Indeed seen a lot has. of good, we've seen a lot of bad, we've seen a lot of weird, which we've come to expect from anime. So you know what? Let's okay. start with that. Just how much did anime grow in the 2010s? <laughs> Proud, anime feels like it's on its way to the big boy leagues. In the 2000s, it felt like this niche little industry, and now, for better or worse, we're in an entirely new playing field. Our small little fan-run companies have either been bought out by large international mega corporations, yes, or sir. other large international mega corporations have decided to enter the market. It's kind of jarring to see just how much the environment has changed. At the start you of the decade, we saw Crunchyroll completely yeah, revolutionize the industry by bringing in anime simulcasts, and in just the 10 years since, since then, we've seen both the rise and fall of the golden age of streaming. Yes, it really is over. Though, to be fair, this isn't an anime-exclusive problem. There was a time when all you needed was a Netflix account, and you would have access to pretty much everything you wanted to. And there was also a time when you could look up the upcoming season, pick every new anime that looked interesting to you, and think to yourself, yeah, these will probably all be on Crunchyroll. Nowadays, streaming feels like it's getting closer and closer to that cable model we thought we had left behind. However, Thanks to that golden age, anime's increased accessibility meant a lot more people got to watch it. The medium is far more popular than it ever has been, validating yes, what we is, as fans always knew. Anime is fucking great, and if more people got the chance to see it, they'd probably like anime too. Yes, and sir, that is exactly watch, what's you can, you can happened. We've gotten to the point where it's no longer now, seen as this like... niche, weird hobby only watched by basement dwellers who want to see cartoon girls get fucked by tentacles. <clears throat> okay, that's a little, I exactly can't do that. don't want to see that. But it's still 
not quite mainstream yet either. The medium has grown a lot, I, but I, I with that has come it. growing pains. Problems we used to view from afar from bigger communities like gaming or movies have slowly popped up in our own. It feels like I can't go a week without some new controversy coming out or some hot take about some irrelevant issue in My Hero Academia or Demon Slayer being posted on Twitter. There no true, longer true, feels true. like there's this same community homogeny around being an anime fan. And with the increased corporate vibe the industry has right now, companies need to realize that the honeymoon period is gone. While at one point the fandom was rooting for them to succeed and was willing to look over a lot of things because we were this small, tiny community that wanted to see anime grow, as it does, people will, and rightly so, hold them to the same standards they hold to companies in bigger, more well-established industries. And that standard hasn't always been met. Industry or community, you can't get away with some of the same things you're used to, and we've all needed to come to accept that, yes, anime has changed. Yeah, I don't yeah. want that to come off as completely negative though, because I'd still pick where we are now over where we started any day of the week. It's exciting to be an anime fan now. It's never been easier to find people I can share my passion with. And most surprisingly, we've also been able to establish that yes, Japan does actually give a fuck about us on the outside. We are yeah, no longer just an like, afterthought. Say, we have a tangible pull and they a do. voice that is heard. And not to forget the biggest effect we've seen, which is there is lots and lots of new anime now. And the quality has actually been pretty damn good. Media overload was a thing, and this was no different for anime. Around the middle of the decade was when I started to feel overwhelmed about the sheer number of anime coming out, and around the end of the decade was when I started to feel overwhelmed about the sheer number of good anime coming out. That's not to say the best of anime we saw before can't match what's coming out now, but I honestly don't think we consistently get as many good anime as we do now. Or to put it in a way that's more current, I feel we are getting as many S-tier shows as we ever did, but on average I think the number of A and B tier shows have increased drastically. And because of that, I think my patience with shows has just decreased so much. I look back at some of the shows I considered pretty decent when I was first getting into anime, and now I compare it to some of the seasonal stuff coming out, and I think to myself, holy shit, this wouldn't even be a C tier show compared to some of the stuff airing today, and now I'm having trouble finding the patience to stick with a show if it's not at least something like a high B tier. Unless, you know, it's that trashy show of the season I put on for some mindless entertainment. Part of the reason I found it so hard to watch shows I've missed is because there hardly feels like there's an opportunity to do so, and I'm just stuck in this perpetual cycle. One of the biggest notable changes has come in the form of viewing habits, most notably the takeover of the seasonal anime cycle as the primary way to discover and consume new anime. This is something I've only really seen take control within the last 10 years. The first anime I ever found myself watching weekly was Nisei Monogatari in 2012, and I feel it was around that time at the start of the decade where the whole concept of seasonal anime started to become a thing. Before that I was never concerned about looking for the newer shows. I was yeah. just looking for good shows. I looked to the classics. I looked to shows I'd never yeah, heard anything, of. I looked anything, to shows that had a cool that, looking good, character bro. someone had set as their profile picture and gave a blind watch based on just that. There wasn't this homogenous place anime fans looked to to find new shows and we had the entire history of anime as our playground. Mm. Of course now it's far more focused on what's hot and new. Like even if you're not following the newest seasonal shows weekly, it's likely that most of the shows you'll find yourself watching have come out within the past year and only occasionally goes further back than that. So, what changed? Obviously, the rise of instant streaming platforms allowed us access to the newest anime at a rate we never yeah, had before. So no reliance on fan sub groups to pick up a show, no just... waiting for episodes to get subbed, yeah. they were out as they were airing in Japan on a consistent schedule. And importantly, that gave anime this social aspect. The seasonal cycle gave us a ground zero we could gather around and discuss that was far more tangible than the unwritten classic anime list we had before. Like, even for casual watchers who don't follow the cycle, they still would have heard of a show like Demon Slayer when it was out because everyone just started talking about it. Right. Instead of asking, what have you watched? We started asking, are you watching? To me, yeah, this is watching? the biggest change. The idea of watching anime as a social experience was so completely alien to me at one point. I mean, the entire reason I started this YouTube channel was because I literally had no one I could talk about about anime with. And the ironic fact is now, that if I had gotten into anime changed, within this like past said, decade, cool, there would be no Giga. Because now the social aspect has become such a massive part of the anime watching experience. It's never been easier to talk about it, share your thoughts on it, find communities to discuss it. And I do admit, it 
it's very fun to be part of the discussion, so the seasonal anime cycle will likely be the way forward to go now for the foreseeable future. Which leads us nicely into the franchises that had the biggest impact in the last 10 years. We've seen a handful of new titles rise up to leave their mark on not only the decades, but a whole new generation of anime fans. But with that, we also saw the end of franchises that marked the previous generation. The age of the big three ended this decade, with Naruto and Bleach closing out their stories, and it really was an end of an era. Naruto yeah. was the anime that got me into anime, and I remember thinking to myself back then, man, this is never gonna end. The big three debate is never gonna die. It's gonna be around forever. Right. And then when it finally did, it was a sobering moment to see the very show that got me into anime and was there for my entire fandom was no longer there anymore. Oh, Both the of these way. shows, you always knew the journey would end eventually, but it never felt like it really would. There was definitely a hole that was left, so of course, everyone immediately jumped on the discussion of what was gonna replace yeah, them. Who's it's the Mar new big three? It's, it's Margie, right? No, 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 no. it's gonna be you, Toriko. No way, man, it's fairy tale. It's definitely gonna be. For a while, nothing <laughs> did, and instead we got a bunch of heavy hitters that had nothing to do with Shonen. So, for a while, I thought maybe the era of generational defining Shonen Jump shows was over. Okay. Turns out I didn't have to wait too long to be proven wrong. My Hero Academia has comfortably taken up the mantle of one of the new era-defining shonen shows. I already know moments like United States of Smash are gonna be an iconic generational memory, like how I can mention Rock Lee taking off his training weights and everyone yes, still flips the their shit at the floor. Anime we shouldn't forget though that there was never gonna be a new Big Three. The Big Three was coined as a result of the environment these shows created, not the other way around. And three isn't an arbitrary number that dictates the number of shows that define an era. However, with Demon Slayer taking over 2019 and even Black Clover and others gaining massive traction, the new era is certainly taking shape. Going into the new decade, I have no doubt that these will be the shows that will define a new generation of young anime fans, proving once again that long-running battle shonen will always remain king in that aspect. As for other big franchises that I feel left their mark on the decade, it's hard to deny the almost mainstream reach that One Punch Man was able to yeah, achieve I know. One Punch Man. Madoka yeah, effectively Punch changed job, every man. new magical girl show after it into this dark, go. messy edge fest, completely missing the point of what Madoka tried to do in the first place. It's hard to imagine that at one point, JoJo was this super niche franchise that only the most dedicated of fans would have heard of, and now has become a staple of the anime fandom. Whether you've seen it or not, if you're an anime fan, you've heard you of JoJo. You know JoJo, it's kind of exactly. Become that gatekeeper whether that you, differentiates you, the completely uh, casual watchers to someone JoJo, you who's know more JoJo. active and aware of the anime, anime community. Monogatari, like to me, feels like it left a massive mark on the you deeper weeb community because it feels like it represents the weirder side of anime that we saw this decade. To this day, I still can't well, comprehend we how it became such a huge you know hit, but it from. really opened my eyes to what felt like a new art form I Not could enjoy. Him, from what anime, I think are the best girls of this decade you know, to a scene seen many Jojo, of us weebs will look like back to and say, like yeah, you know I think this was the start of my degeneracy. But for me, my personal franchise I'll remember this decade for will have to go to Attack on Titan. And this isn't because it's just a genuinely good show that has gotten better with each season or because of its massive popularity that made it one of the most prominent anime of the decade. No, what cemented it for me was one insignificant day when I was still working an office job. While having a coffee break with some guys, chatting about what we got up to on the weekend and the latest football scores, one of my co-workers out of nowhere turns to us and asks if we've heard of this show called Attack on Titan. I was so taken aback that I had just heard an anime being brought up in a normal daily conversation that I just stood there and stared at him in silence for a good few seconds before asking... Sorry, what was that you just said? Oh yeah, there's this new show called Attack on Titan. It's like this cartoon from Japan. I think it's like called an anime or something, but it's actually really good. And it's moments like this that will make Attack on Titan the franchise I'll remember. Because for the first time in my life, anime seemed... cool. It was a show that wasn't just popular for anime fans, but something that could be watched by anyone. And right, coming exactly. from a childhood where exactly. I got bullied for liking anybody anime as a kid, to being a complete be. closet fan as a teenager for fear of being know. mocked and ridiculed, it was a moment I never thought would ever happen. The feeling that I didn't need to be ashamed or hide the facts that I watch anime, and as stupid as it sounds now, that was a big deal for me. Today, it's become a much more accepted medium overall, and looking back, it was Attack on Titan that really laid the groundwork to allow this to happen. There was one other little franchise that I missed that might have had a small effect. Because every decade has their own trends that took over. 
And you know, hey, we can man. oftentimes look back in history and pinpoint exactly where that trends began. <sighs> From cute girls most doing cute love, things, isekai was the time. trend that we are so going to remember this decade for. Sure. You know it, I know it, we've all talked about it enough, let's move on. Because one other thing that's seen great change is films. A lot of people asked why... I didn't mention any films in my 2019 retrospective, and the simple answer for that is because, well, I just didn't get a chance to see many. The only one I did get to see was Promare, which was fucking awesome, luckily because it got an English dub theatre release here in Japan with Japanese subtitles. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know which dimension I've woken up in either. The reverse of, you know, card dimension? Before, the thought yeah. of seeing anime movies in theatres was a distant pipe dream outside of limited Ghibli film runs, but now, if a film even has a moderate amount of hype around it, there's a decent chance it'll get a screening in a major city, at least if you live here in the West. Love it or think it's overrated, you can't deny how much the anime film industry has your name to thank for its current environment. It broke box office records Wait, worldwide part, no? and proved that there was a market for anime films, something every major outlet to ask. Have we found the next Miyazaki? Like the third time. While we haven't reached that same kind of community homogeny where we can talk about the latest films and expect everyone to have gotten a chance to see it, the fact that we even can see an announcement for a new hype anime film and think to ourselves, well, I can't wait to see this when it comes out theaters is absolutely amazing to me. And I hope this is a trend that will spread even further globally during the new decade. I mean, look at all the new anime films we have to look forward to, like, uh, How Do You Live by this young up-and-coming director. Who knows, if this film becomes a big hit, he might even become the next Miyazaki. And oh, I think that's on, everything bro. I wanted to talk about. <laughs> yeah, you, you, Looking back yeah. at the last decade as a whole, if I had to sum up what's happened to anime on, in a single bro. sentence, yeah, obviously for me, him, the 2010s <laughs> is when anime started to grow up. It grew outside of the confines of hardcore fans discussing it in online forums. It grew from being a niche industry that only catered towards one country. It grew from being this small, distinguishable medium to a flourishing staple of nerd culture as a whole. It's been a joy to see the journey it took, not just as a fan, but someone who's been creating anime content on YouTube for that whole time. Yes, if you didn't know, my first upload was in 2007, and somehow in that time I've grown enough to become a professional anime... Oh, no. Get that word away from me. <sighs> Are these really the only two options for my official job title? <laughs> I'll take it. I have a lot to be thankful for in these past 10 years, and I never actually thought anime would get to this point. But one thing I don't think would have ever changed regardless of what happened is my passion for this medium. It's been an exciting 10 years of anime, and I don't know what the next 10 years are going to be like, except for the fact that I'm definitely going to be there to watch it all the way. <laughs> Hey guys, Gigak here. Hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much again to Naruto Slugfest for sponsoring me today. If any of what I showed looked interesting to you, then you can click the link below to pre-register and get your hands on it as soon as it's out. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a bit disappointed I missed out on the beta because I really want to try this game out. Like, now that I'm living in Japan, I play way more mobile games while I'm like used to on the train and everything, so uh, Naruto Mobile MMORPG looks right up my alley, so I really can't wait to try this out. Hey man, shout out to the boy Get Gut, bro, making fun. Uh, this is a great video, bro. I definitely do agree, man. Anime definitely did come a long way. And she's a huge anime fan of myself. I've watched anime since I was in second grade, bro. Um, you know, I, I'm a high school graduate, stuff like that. So I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been in the anime game for a long time, bro. You know, I'm not afraid to show to show my love for anime. I'm not afraid to, I'm not afraid to admit it. You know, I made two films, you know, two short films of you no, know, I made a of of, of anime shows that I grew up in, you know, Dragon Ball Super. You know, I made a short film of that, like, you know, inspiration video from that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I made, you know, another another anime video, stuff like that. I got my, I got a lot of anime videos, stuff like that, and discussions, and, you know, I, I was a blo anime blogger at one point. I was a blogger at one point, and I, I'm not afraid to show my, you know, show my love for anime anymore. Like I said, I got a freaking tattoo, Naruto tattoo, you know what I'm saying? I got a My Hero Hoodie, I got the controls, the games, I got... Draw, mo, hundreds of drawings and stuff like that of anime. I, like I grew up with this stuff, and I'm happy that it's getting the respect that it deserves because you know anime is it's, it's, it's great stuff. You know what I'm saying? People, all, people, people back in the day used to bash on, saying all oh, that stuff is gay, all that crap is gay. It's not cool. But nah, bro, like you haven't even gave it a chance. How about you watch it and and then give your opinion? If you don't like it after you done watched it, then you don't like it. So that's just how it is. But I'm happy, you know. Anime, I think I I think anime is starting to become more. It's starting to become mainstream. I feel like that's anime is starting to become like the more cool thing to do nowadays because 
you know, now people, you know, now people are like fully, and now you even got people, like, I, 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 I've even met some people that I wouldn't even never thought who would like anime. You know, I've seen, I've actually came across some people not that long ago saying, hey, bro, did you see that new, did you see that new so and so? I'm like, whoa. The way he presents himself, the way he speaks, like, you never, don't judge a book by its cover. You, you, the guy can be dressed a certain way, but he still could be a hardcore anime fan. And that's exactly what that guy was. So, you know, like I said, I, like I said, bro, anime's come a long way. It grew up so nicely, bro. And I'm just sitting back in the cut loving every moment of it, fam, because I was one of those people that used to get picked on for watching it. Now, look where we are now. So, anyway, guys, this is boy MJ, so I can't mind you, This is me signing out. I got some, now I got some other projects coming out. I got, um, because I guess I'll get, I'll get you, let you guys know now. I got an AMV coming out soon. Uh, I got a King Vader edit coming out soon. And I got, I'm going to have to repost that Dragon Ball Super video again. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, we got three more videos coming out, girls. So keep guys keep on the lookout for that. Anyway, guys, for MJ's one K Mosh Markets, I'll see you guys in my next video. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh yeah. Buzzy. Alright guys.